Hi everybody, it's Pastor Warren Cook from Friendship Church, and we're reading the Bible together. We're reading through the Bible using a plan that you can find at www.friendship.church, and I think it's on the Resources tab. Uh, unless the website changes, I think you can go there and just see what we're doing. Anyway, though, it's Psalm 104. It says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. O Lord my God, how great you are! You're robed with honor and majesty. You're dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make your clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. Flames of fire are your servants. Another one says, he makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire. Another one says, he makes winds his messengers, and the flames of fire are his servants. I kind of lean towards the King James. I've used that one for so long. His angels are spirits. The word angels is messengers. His angels, his messengers, are spiritual beings, and they're ministers who are flames of fire, flaming fires. You place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water, water that covered even the mountains. Can you get an idea of how immense God is, how amazing and massive God is beyond our imagination? Verse 7, at your command, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. And then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they'd never again cover the earth. You make springs pour water into the ravines, so streams gush down from the mountains. They give water to all the beasts of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds of the sky nest by the waters. They sing among the branches. Again, God is beautiful, and God is orderly, and God's worked it all out. He's got everything figured out. Verse 13, he waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle and plants for people to cultivate, bringing forth fruit from the food from the earth. You see, the point is God's going to take care of you. He can do it. He gives wine to make them glad and olive oil to soothe their skin and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in the junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats and the crags are a refuge for the hyraxes, one says conies, one says badgers, and I kind of like the message. Oh, it's the Bible in basic English. It just says for the small beasts. High in the mountains live the wild goats, and the rocks form a refuge for the small beasts. You made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to set. You send the darkness, and it becomes night, when all the forest animals prowl about. And then the young lions roar for their prey, stalking the food provided by God. At dawn, they sling back into their dens to rest. The people go off to their work and where they labor until evening. O oh Lord, what a variety of things you've made. Here he goes. He finally sums it all up. O oh Lord, what a variety of things you've made. And in wisdom, you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here's the ocean, ocean vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. See the ship sailing along and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. Nobody knows for sure what Leviathan is. Some people think it's a sea monster, and some people think it's just, you know, massive whales of some kind. But it says, see the ships sailing along, and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. And some of those whales, when they come up and breach, it looks like they're playing, doesn't it? They all depend on you to give them food as they need it, and so do we, right? We depend on God to give us our food whenever we need it, and he is so faithful and so kind, and he never forgets about us, and he's so generous, and he has so many ways to provide for us. He never forgets about us. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen their seed out begging bread. God always supplies for us. And he says, when you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them and they are satisfied. I like this in the King James actually it says, what you give them, they gather. You open your hand and they're filled with good. Verse 29, but if you turn away from them, then they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them your breath, life is created and you renew the face of the earth. 
May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. Boy, I tell you what, I love to see a good sunrise, a good sunset, or just beautiful topography of all kinds. And in that need to think God's looking down from heaven, he takes pleasure in everything that he made. The earth trembles at his glance, the mountains smoke at his touch. And then David says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him. I like the King James. My meditation of him shall be sweet. And then it says, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. Wouldn't life be easier if all the sinners just wouldn't mess with us? Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's how the psalm ends. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's Psalm 104. God bless you.